All right. Good afternoon. I don't think any of us expected to see you here, but it is nice to see you. Talk us through the, uh, what must have been a bit of a crazy process for you to get here and fight on Saturday. I mean, it's not the first time, you know. And how crazy is it? Same location. So I think this has kind of been my whole career. It's been preparing me for, for moments like this. I've, after my first ever professional fight, I couldn't get a fight for a long, long time. But you just had to stay in the gym and then hopefully get a fight on a couple of weeks and, and jump in. And so this is what we do. Fighters fight. Now, there is a difference, though, right? Last time you were champion, and it felt like the card was on your back, and this guy came in to fight you. This time it's you coming in to fight a guy who everyone's saying is this unstoppable force. Is that part of the motivation? What exactly you said made you sort of go, yes, okay, I will do this again? No, I think it's just the opportunity. You know, it's another opportunity to be able to test yourself. It's another opportunity to be able to elevate yourself. And it's part of being a man, it's part of living. You know, you have highs of highs and you have lows of lows. And living is being able to get up and get back on that horse and test yourself like that again. I mean, most people can't, won't be able to guess what my favorite fight is that I've been in. Can anyone guess what that fight is? I'll tell you guess that it's the first Masvidal fight just because of the situation. No. <laughs> It was the first Covington fight. And a lot of people would say that's the most challenging fight I've had. Obviously, my last two fights. But that fight was extremely challenging because it was just something primal about it. I didn't think about anything. I didn't worry about anything. I didn't care about anything. It was just me in there, just putting my heart and my soul into that fight. There was nothing that could have distracted me that night. And so when you get down with that fight, a fight like that, everyone was like, oh man, you got hit a lot. You got, but it was the most fun fight I've ever had. And so I realized through soul searching, it's just that, hey, that's, that's, you only get a few of those moments to be able to experience something like that. So, you know, I want to experience it a couple more times before I walk away from this sport. It's funny, you used the word there, primal. And I think we've seen how Hamzat fights, right? It seems to be on the gas the moment he comes out and primal would be a good word to describe it. Is that what you're expecting when you get in there with him? Yeah, I expect any and everything. You know, that's what you prepare for. That's what you train for each and every day. And so I'm expecting it. I, ex I expect him to come out and do whatever he wants to do and try whatever he wants to do. That's part of, uh, that's part of this sport. You know, we jockeying for position each and every inch and... You know, whoever's plan starts to unravel, then the other guy's hand will be raised. He was just in here, obviously asked about you, and he said that this is a fight that he's been hearing about since the moment he got to this promotion. And he said that he sees similarities in you, but I have to say, he also said that you're like the iPhone 5 version, and he's the iPhone Pro version. He said, you're the older case, and he's the new guy coming on the block. Do you see this guy to be this threat that everyone says he is? Or do you think, no, I'm actually, I've been around and I've seen this and I've seen this come and I've seen this go. What do you think about him and his terms of where he could go in this sport? I think he's as advertised. He's very tough, you know, very uh, strong. He's big. He can strike, he can wrestle, he can grapple. He can do it all. So can I, you know, so I, I think he's as advertised but you don't know until you know. You know, ignorance is bliss sometimes. And I give him all, all the props in the world. He's done everything he needed to do with what he's been presented with. You know, but you know, that iPhone Pro sometimes doesn't fit in certain pockets. You know, you might, you might need just a regular iPhone. They both take good pictures and they both work just fine. <laughs> I like that. If you win this fight, you're getting a title shot. And I, I believe I heard you this week saying you can take one title, go down and take your old title, and then just walk away into the sunset. Him and, uh, him and Islam both sort of suggested that you and Alex are coming here for the money, right? You're getting a big pay jump. But for you, what is the motivation to be here? Is it to show people you can do it? Is it to get money or is it to get that title back? Do you think I have money? I would say you've got a little bit of money, yeah. I'm tucked away somewhere. Hmm. Okay. So clearly it ain't about the money, you know, and I asked for the fight. You asked for the fight. 
initially when he was at my way. Uh -huh, yeah. But, you know, he's missed it, what, a couple of times now? I don't know how many times. And, you know, so it's one of those situations. I don't really care. It's just honestly, when I think about it, it's soul searching. It, it's, it's wanting to get that opportunity, wanting to feel that again. Because if you really look at it, when I was sitting down, waiting for a fight, what was everyone saying? Oh, who's he gonna fight? Like, we've seen him fight that guy twice, that guy three times, he's beat that guy, he's beat that one. Yeah. You know, people were kind of, oh, what, what excites us about about a fight? Are you excited about this fight? Think so. Come on, uh, Alex was in here and he said, uh, it's kind of a blessing in disguise because he, he wasn't putting his body through hell for the eight, 12 weeks and, he just gets focused on himself and comes in like obviously he would prefer a full camp but he is fresh in the head and kind of physically fresh so i'm curious do you feel the same way absolutely it's just something it's such a weird switch that's flipped when you sign the contract and so before that you're just training you'll be surprised you go into some of these these gyms and and you'll see a you know obviously you'll see a, a guy just having his way with other guys train if it's a guy that's preparing for a fight you're just kicking the shit out of him you're just doing whatever you want with them and then the moment you sign the fight it's like oh my god nothing works it's just a switch that goes off in your head and so we didn't have to make that switch this time we was in the gym just you know doing what we do this is our career we're not just sitting at home and doing absolutely nothing you know we're in the gym we're learning we're growing and when the opportunity came, you know, it took a little second to think about it. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And obviously the last few of your fights, especially the title fights, they've been big fights, but I feel like the buzz around you fighting Hamza just feels a little different than, you know, rematching Leon or rematching Colby. So I'm curious, just compared to the buildup to those fights, do you feel like more fans are excited for this fight specifically than any of your recent ones? You tell me. I would say so. Then why wouldn't I want to do it? Exactly. I'm curious, are you, do you think you'll feel like an actual middleweight in there or just a welterweight that's not cutting as much weight? I, that doesn't make any difference. You know, since the beginning of my career, Henry in our gym that we, you know, when I started, he always said the same thing every day. It doesn't matter. Everybody spars everybody. It doesn't matter if you're big, you're small, you're skinny, you're fat, you're ugly, cute, doesn't matter. Everybody spars everybody. I had to spar Anthony Johnson. <laughs> You know, I had to spar Anthony Johnson for a lot of, of my career and his career. So it doesn't matter. And final one for me, obviously, if you do get past Hamza, you, Sean Strickland, the rematch that I, I don't think a lot of people know that you did fight him at welterweight so long ago. So I'm curious, back then, like you, you're pretty vocal that you saw something in Leon that you, you kind of assumed maybe you would see him down the road after your first fight. Was there any part of you that after you beat Sean the first time that maybe I would see Sean Strickland again down the road and would be in a UFC title fight. I don't think of it like that. I think of it when I, when I reflect. At that point, I was coming downhill fast. I didn't care who was in my way. And Leon was that, I didn't care. I took care of business. Sean was that, I didn't care. And I took care of business. And so I, I don't really, you know, I don't really dwell on it. It's when I'm done and I sit back now and, and start to reflect a little bit more and more. You know, like you just mentioned, a lot of people didn't know that I fought Sean Strickland. So you can tell, I, I've been putting in work for a minute now. And so it's just kind of one of those things. Now I'm starting to be in a position to where you get to reflect and say, hmm, I did put some work in. You know, be quite a few people here. How do you think Sean has evolved since then? Obviously fighting up a different division now, but do you see many similarities in his game or does he look vastly different to you now? Yeah, this is MMA. Styles make fights. Uh, Sean, I think he's definitely grown a lot, of course. And, but I think the most important thing is he's grown into his identity of a fighter. He accepts the fact that he fights his particular style, a particular way. And he's just leaned into it and he's grown exponentially and now he's a champion. But styles make fights. You know, I've, I said it when I came into the game, I'm a nightmare for certain people to deal with. And, you know, I just think that, you know, that matchup, it's a nightmare for, for Sean Strickland, but he's grown exponentially. He's very, very improved.
And when you look at the fight with Hamza, I mean, we haven't seen him face a ton of adversity. Probably the Gilbert fight was definitely moments that he had to fight back from. He said he learned from that and, you know, won't be as wild and things like that. But um, when you watch that fight back, do you feel like there's things that maybe Gilbert didn't take advantage of that you would in a similar scenario? I mean, we're, we're different fighters. Gilbert Burns is a, is a hell of a fighter, great fighter, but I'm a different fighter. So my fight IQ, the way I see certain things or, or just compute certain things in the fight are slightly different. So, you know, it is what it is. And if Hamzad is the true contender and, and potential future um, star that I think he could be, um, then hopefully he learned from that. But we'll find out Saturday. And in this fight, you will have uh, Henry Hooft in your corner, as well as Trevor Whitman for the first time. Um, how do you think that's going to like manifest itself? What kind of confidence does it give you having those two voices behind you on a fight night? Great confidence. I think, um, you know, all through life, all through my career, I, I am now when I reflect, I'm like, I've always been blessed to be in front of men that, that pour into me in a certain way that kind of help push me further in my journey of life. And to be able to stumble into the gym and have a Henry Hoof build the foundation and then somehow run into Trevor Whitman and meet him to where, you know, you can find a coach that could kind of fine tune and hone into certain things. And to have both of them, it's, they're very, very different in their approach but they're both different approaches that speak to me and get me to react a certain way. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm excited. I want to see how it works because, you know, sometimes I need, a, I need a drill sergeant and sometimes I need a friend to talk to me. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, Francis Ngannou is fighting next weekend in Saudi Arabia. Are you going to go from here to there? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. You know, we'll, we'll see. I, I try not to make too many plans. You know, I did that once. It worked out, actually. I had a GQ shoot right after New York. So I try not to make too many plans right after a fight because you never know what's going to happen. So, But, of course, I would love to get out there and support Francis. Uh, you know, Francis has been my brother since I, I um, we both got into the UFC. I think our actual first official fight was in the same card in the UFC. So, yeah, I would love to support him. And uh, there's a lot of people kind of doubting him, just like people doubt me and people doubt us. That's life. They doubt us each and every day. But, you know, as long as you're blessed with two arms, two feet, and you can step in there, anything can happen. And just last thing, if you, you know, win this fight, go on to rematch Sean Strickland, win that. There's a whole, you know, plethora of other guys. But um, it just seems like Drickus Duplessis is the number one contender, and you've had words about him in the past. Would that be a fight that you would relish? Absolutely. You could. I, I don't say no to fights, clearly, <laughs> you know. So uh, it, 100%, it could happen. Um, I could also go down and, and take that belt back, you know. So, you know, you never know. I mean, what a way to go out, huh? Move up, grab that belt, go back down, grab that one too. Throw up some fingers, walk away. <laughs> and you mentioned going down, last one for me. Um, if Colby beats Leon... Would that be like, kind of like a weird thing for you to compute considering you've beaten him <laughs> twice and then, you know, what happened with Leon? No. Like I just told you the plans. You know, go grab this one real quick, keep it warm before Izzy come back and uh, go down and grab that one too. Kamara, over here. Hi. You boast a 97% takedown defense rate. Uh, do you think Hamza will be able to take you down? And how do you envision this fight going? Because sometimes two grapplers could neutralize each other, but we've seen you stand and trade too. And so we've seen him as well. I don't know. Doesn't, I don't, doesn't really matter to me. You know, um, some guys wrestle, some guys don't. I mean, I went with, I, rest, I fought Kobe Covington in the first fight. None of us took a shot, you know. I fought Leon Edwards, he took a couple of shots. It's like, you know, so it doesn't really check out. It doesn't matter if he tries to take me down, good. If he doesn't, good. And what do you think of his striking? It's good, very good. Good striking, good wrestling, good grappling, you know, good endurance so far. So it's all good. We'll see how it plays out on Saturday. Uh, just one 
Well, one more for me. Uh, Colby and, and Leon, a lot of people feel like Colby's wrestling could trouble Leon, a lot of pundits. You fought both guys. Uh, how do you see the fight playing out? And do you feel like Leon could uh, stuff his takedowns? That's an intriguing fight. That's a fight that I'm, I'm looking forward to. Just because I'm a fan of, of high-level fighting. And, and I'm a fan of both guys. And so that's a, a fight that I'm definitely looking forward to. Kobe is, you know, styles make fights and MMA math doesn't really check out. So we'll see how that, that plays out. But, you know, I think uh, Leon's a bit underrated and just kind of, he's a bit underrated. And Covington as well. I think his striking's a bit underrated too. So we'll see how that checks out for sure. I'd be excited. Thank you. Kamara, uh, your reign has been considered one of the greatest of all time. Uh, now, coming off two losses, it's almost as though people have forgotten how good you are. How important is this fight to get yourself back into the conversation as the welterweight goat? I, it's not that important. Getting in that conversation is not that important. I, I didn't do this to be in the conversation. I just did this because, uh, well, one, I wanted to make money. And, and two, I just, I love to compete. I loved to compete. And it was just something that burned inside of me to where I always wanted to compete and compete. Even though as scary as it is, even though as hot, didn't matter how high the mountain looked at the time, I just wanted to compete, to try to climb it. And so, yeah, I mean, it's crazy how quick people forget, you know, um, you have two fights where, I mean, if you look at those fights, the, look at the, the second, uh, Edwards fight. Had I not, that, that minute, that kick not landed with a minute left of the fight, we're not even having a conversation. And so, and then the second fight, and that's considered, Leon's the best in the world right now, considered in my, in my uh, weight class. So, and look how that fight, how close that fight was. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, people forget very quickly, but it is what it is. I'm not here to put myself in any conversation because for them to talk about, you know, this is for me. This is me getting up there and this is me putting my heart and soul back out there and, and figuring out what I really want. Well, throughout your career, you're usually the overwhelming favorite going into a fight. How does it feel going into this fight as the underdog? Never mattered to me whether you're the favorite or the underdog means no difference. I still have to get in there and, um, you know, punch someone's face and they're gonna punch my face. So it never mattered. I think uh, I've been underdogs so before. In the Woodley fight, I was an underdog. I mean, yeah, so it makes no difference. Well, best of luck. Thank you. The main event, Islam versus Volkanovski. I think that is uh, it's an intriguing fight. I mean, for Volkanovski, it's just, what, what a great way <laughs> to just come in and, uh, you know, take another shot. It doesn't, uh, doesn't affect him in any way. You've already lost to him, so it doesn't, you know, you're just getting another crack at it. Islam is big, strong. I think Islam, if he's a champion that I, I know he is, I think he, he took a lot away from that first fight and understood that, okay, maybe it's not as easy as I thought it was. Now we're going to, you know, tweak a few things I think Islam gets it done I think he gets it done but Volkanovski is no slouch I mean he has no neck for you to choke you know the legs aren't super long for you to grab and take him down so you know he's just a perfect little uh perfect soldier out there thank you guys